Okay, we are looking at the gear do plate carrier or bulletproof vest, um, as people call it. And what are some of the features of this vest that makes it different from other vests out there and how this thing came into development? So there's a couple right. of things that, uh, that we obviously had to look at when we developed this specific vest. Um, first of all, it was important for us uh, to, to um, have a complete MOLLE system, as you can see here, all right? Uh, now, if you look at the MOLLE system or the PALS system, you can Google P-A-L-S, then you'll see that there's actually a standard for the PALS system, all right? And if you look at the standard for the PALS system, it says the following. It says that the space or the width of these strips must be equal to the width there in between them. That means that when you weave your kit through that, you can actually weave your kit equally through that. Otherwise, if this space starts um, differing in height from these straps that we put on there, then you're going to end up with your kit being put on this and it's going to start missing a loop or two. You'll see what I mean. Have a look at the vest that's around. Um, the latest technology, the guys do laser cutting on them. But if you do it like this, then this is important. So that spacing is part of the standard. All right. The next thing is that, as you can see, that space from the one to the next that allows you that space, there's also a standard for that. So you must make sure that you've got equal spacing there. Then it has to be a specific stitching. And in our case, this is stitched from there, down, up again, down, up again, down, up again, down, and then through to the next one. And the process is repeated. So what you get is you get one stitch right through on this whole panel. So all the panels that you see here, you got the same stitching. So that's important. All right. We also put Molly system on the back. And then while the we grab the handle, the grab handle is important for us. It has to be there, but it has to be Velcro flat. Otherwise, it's sticking out like this and anybody can grab you or it can hook onto stuff. All right. So that's something you don't want. Next thing is you usually get the sides of the vests and they've only got two Velcro strips or they've only got two molly belts. They've only got one and two. Now, two is not enough for you to weave your system through. You're going to need at least three. That's why this thing is so wide. All right. So we had to put that in. That was important for us. The other thing that we didn't want, we didn't want buckles on this here in front. Why not? Because the buckles, the moment I put a carbine or a shotgun in my shoulder, then I'm stuck on the, on the buckle. And the moment I'm stuck on the buckle, what happens is I can't get that stock, that butt of the gun, or the rifle, into my shoulder. Then it starts falling around all over the buckle. And that's something you don't want. So what you've got here is you've got these straps that are actually going down into the vest and then stitched onto there. The same as our drag handle. The drag handle goes down into the vest and then gets stitched on there. So what, you've get, what you get here is one consistent vest. Last feature that I want to, want, want to mention that this yeah. vest is made from ripstop material. So you've got a quality, solid ripstop material here. Why is that important? Because if your body needs to be pulled, you can grab the vest either on the drag handle, or you can grab the vest by the shoulder strap and you can start dragging them and it will be fine. All right. Because you've got a solid, strong material here. Okay. Another feature we've got here is these wide shoulder straps. Why did we do that? The wide shoulder straps is for your radio to go onto. Now, I know if you're a Navy SEAL, you put your radio here. But why? It's because they've got specific antennas for those radios. If you're a normal citizen in South Africa in 2021, don't put your radio there because you've got an omnidirectional antenna on that radio. And the moment it's there, 
you're taking away 180 degrees of that antenna's reach. So it's not a nice one. It's not a clever thing to do. Your radio, your aerial needs to clear so that you can actually have good quality chatter with everybody in the, in the vicinity. Right, otherwise you are messing with your aerial and you don't want to do that. Right, so that's the gear to vest. Okay, it's a plate carrier. It means that you can slip and you can slide in plates. If you open it at the bottom, right? Right here at the bottom, you can open these flaps and you can slide in plates. Right, so it's a plate carrier. There's no Kevlar in this. This is to carry steel plates. Now, why steel okay. plates? Steel plates and steel plates is important. We've got two levels. We've got level three and level three A. And the plates that we use are actually tack assist plates. There you can see tack assist plates. These plates have got all the paperwork that you need. No need to worry about that. All the tests have been done. Now, before I've got some wise warriors out there telling me that we are doing stupid tests. These plates have already been tested. These plates have already been certified according to the correct standards. That means you put the plate inside a vest and you put it on a, uh, on a dummy, a ballistics dummy, and it gets tested under specific stand, uh, situations. That has already been done. Okay. We didn't, and we don't need to do that again. That's why TAC Assist has got a name in the industry. They are making our plates for us. All right. So what we've done is, and you will see a link to a video in here to see how we actually shot these plates. And you can see if I tilt it like this, you can see the light falling on this plate. This plate was actually shot by 762 as well as 556, 223, all right? And you can see at the back, I don't know if the light will catch it correctly, but you can see the impact that the bullets have made or the rounds have made there. Right there, you can see the impact that was done. You'll see on the video, and obviously then this came off because of that. But this plate is still intact, and that's why we prefer steel plates. You can go ceramic, it's much, uh, it's much lighter. This plate is about three kilograms in weight. So you're gonna have three kilograms in the front, three kgs in the back, but you can go ceramic. The difference with ceramic and steel, this thing can take a lot more shots than the ceramic can. So that's the only difference. So you're going to end up paying more and you're going to have a plate that after a couple of shots, it will most probably have a problem and you'll have to swap and change it. Steel plates, you can go about 10 to 20 years, 15, 20 years, and then just replace those. But if they haven't taken any shots, it's steel. Nothing can actually go wrong with them. Steel's got spalding on um, and that's what you want. So these plates made to fit into the vest, as you can see there. Um, and that's the gear to plate carrier in a nutshell. All right, so you can order your, your plate carrier. The links will be, um, I'm not sure, they'll be here or they'll be there or they'll be there or they'll be somewhere, but they'll be in the description. You can have a look there, click on the link, go through to the shopping cart. You can order your stuff. We give it, uh, give the guys and get you a buzz. We use these now extensively at Fortress. Why? Because tried and tested now. We've tried it, we've tested it, and we are happy with the results. Right, so that's the gear to plate carrier in a nutshell. Keep safe out there.